The following is an exclusive presentation of Meet the Leaders, only on Optimum. We're your TV, phone, and internet company. Should social media be used to achieve the highest government transparency? There's a controversy. Meet the Leaders starts now. Hi, I'm Pat Halpin. Welcome to Meet the Leaders, the show getting you to the heart of local government right here and right now with Nassau County Controller George Maragos. Controller Maragos, it's great to have you back on Meet the Leaders. Pat, thank you for having me and happy and St. Patrick's. Thank you very much. I've got my tie. We'll be going <laughs> so to I. a uh, lunch for uh, Irish Americans in government after this. Um, but as, as we all know, government uh, doesn't stop for St. Patrick's Day or, or anything else. No, absolutely not. But, you know, you've, you've uh, set a new standard for transparency by putting out there basically every contract uh, that, they, that uh, your office administers or reviews, which is every contract in Nassau County government, right out there on the Internet. Why did you do that? Absolutely. And not only the contracts, but all the bills that we pay. And the bills, and too. And the bills, correct. So people know where their money is going. So what's been the reaction to that? A very positive, except from uh, one of the, uh, the editorial, the local editorial boards, that didn't think that we were doing it in, in the appropriate uh, technological manner. Well, talk about, tell us about how you went about doing it, because it actually turned out to be remarkably simple. It, it was, because we used the, the social media that the, everybody these days is tuned in, and it, rather than the old media, which is now the websites have become old media, where you really literally have to go searching to find information on the website. And as you know, social media sends that information to you, alerts you that there's information mm -hmm. that you may be interested in the public domain. So we used that uh, social media effectively. Uh, it was secure. Uh, and it had the, uh, the ubiquitous distribution within our community or whoever is interested. Or is ever interested. So give me an example of how it works. So let's say I'm interested in a contract from a particular uh, social service type agency or, or, or a vendor that's doing work uh, for the uh, county controller's office. Well, it's very, very simple. If you have a little knowledge of, of Excel, uh, you will get an alert on your social media, on your Facebook or on your Twitter. Mm -hmm that we've updated uh, the contract, all the contracts. Uh, you can click on a, on a link, go to uh, Google uh, Docs, download it in whatever format you want, whether it's in Excel, whether it's in Word, whether it's in some other database format, and then you can manipulate it and sort it and, and find the information you're looking for. So how is it that a person um can, can do this so easily. When you do this through Google Docs and social media and simple Excel spreadsheets, is that something that's very costly? Because typically, when government gets into doing something on any scale, uh, inevitably it becomes much more complicated and therefore more costly. But that's, that's the imagine. beauty of social media, if you know how to use it. It's free and it's secure. Can't get any better than that. We didn't spend a single dollar. So what objection would the uh, local media have other than that, they're old media, uh, <laughs> to having all of that data out there. In well, the past, you used to have to file Freedom of Information forms correct. and do these FOILs and, and wait all these days to get information uh, like that, if you got it at all. Well, because we didn't do it the old-fashioned way, using uh, strictly websites and making mm -hmm. it uh, appealing or having an appealing and sexy website, uh, they took exception to that. And uh, obviously, they weren't aware that the world has moved from websites now to social media. And that the, uh, there are all these wonderful tools that are freely available, uh, that are secure, that doesn't cost government anything, mm -hmm. that is used for the purpose of distributing information. Now, what about confidential information? How do you go about making sure that you're not putting out their uh, tax ID numbers, social security numbers, you know, all of these things that, get, that hackers salivate over uh, or for that matter bank account information uh, for the transmittal of payments and how do you make sure that that information is protected and doesn't get out there frankly for the whole world to see a good, good question uh, we we uh, have our legal team that uh, reviews that information we make sure that nothing of a personal nature is is uh, put on the on the website 
Uh, in the case of some contracts, such as uh, the contracts and, and claims from the district attorney's office, mm -hmm. we sent it to, to the district attorney for their review before we post it on, on the website. So we are very, very sensitive uh, to security and uh, sensitive personal information. And, and, and confidentiality. <coughs> um, you know, I, I, as county executive, I always had this concern that one day somebody from 60 Minutes would show up and, and, and pull out a huge county contract and say, uh, did you know about this? Did you know about that? And, and of course, I would say, I really didn't know. But, but wait a second, on page 998, this is your signature, and you right. signed it. How could you not have known? Mm -hmm. Now you don't even have to wait for 60 minutes to do that type <laughs> of analysis. Somebody could just pull it out. That's right. But that's what I think we, we want from government, to be fully transparent. And, and when uh, public officials make a mistake, let just fess up to it, uh, correct it as best as you can, and move on. By the way, I delegated respond, the responsibility of signing contracts, which are literally in the thousands, mm -hmm. to my chief deputy. So do I, by the way. <laughs> so, so, so I let somebody else do that. I'm an elected <laughs> official. You can do all the explaining. You're not ready for anything. That's but I have, got, I have news for you. You're still responsible. You though. are still responsible. And by the way, I also made sure... Uh, that in all the appropriate places, the department heads and the county attorney and all that, you know, signed off right. on, on key elements of it so that it was all legal and above board and appropriate and properly reviewed before it gets uh, to final signature. But it is so interesting that you should do that. Are you finding that, uh, that um, most people are, frankly, uh, not even bothering? Are you getting, are, are people going to these websites and, and getting those contracts? Oh, they, they are. Uh, absolutely, and and we've also seen that our freedom of information request, which used to be again the classical way to right. get information, uh, which would have entailed the, not only the public waiting to get that information, but a, a lot of effort on the part of uh, of uh, public offices to to source that information, uh, review it, and and uh, send it to the uh, person requesting it. Uh, so we've actually mm -hmm. become more efficient. And by really putting that information out there, uh, go and get it. And uh, so we've seen the, those requests diminish significantly. Well, you know, you're, you're right about that. I mean, it's, uh, New York has, has, has been a leader in open government, but, when it, but there's nothing more open than what you're doing, which is to say, here it is, it's out there. I would actually think that the vendors themselves would like the fact that they know that they could go get it if they need an executed copy of their contracts. Although they might have, they'll obviously get that as well for their own files. But in the event that, uh, for whatever reason, they misplace it, you know, that's a great source the, for them. The vendors, the legislators, the you know investigators, the mm -hmm. public, whoever wants to um, uh, view that information, uh, it's freely available. So has anybody come to you and said, "We reviewed this contract"? Uh, there are some things here that you ought to be, you, the county, ought to be concerned about. Or not you, yet. as the controller, ought to be concerned about. Not yet. They now, this have is, not done so. You know, this is part of something that you started doing when you became controller, which is that you looked at the county's contracting process and said when it comes, especially to the delivery of goods and services, you were not satisfied that the county had it clearly spelled out what the deliverables were and when. And that, that, is, that is correct, which is very critical. When you enter into a contract, you want to know clearly what you're getting, mm -hmm. and and when you're paying, and for what you're paying, you know. And and there wasn't that clarity in any of the contracts. And what I found, there were a lot of uh, progress payments in contract. Well, progress payments do not guarantee delivery of a product or or a service. Y it guarantees that you're going to spend the money, right. but you may not get anything for it. Uh, so changing that culture, that philosophy has allowed us to save over $300 million. Now, did you do that by just pushing those contracts back as they come back and show you know, more, more clearly defined uh, goals and deliverables? Uh, absolutely. And, and, and I'm not going to approve this unless you do that? Which is a standard practice in business. Now, did you train the departments to say, here's what I mean by that? Here's no, how we go didn't train that? them. We just uh, asked them to think through the project right. and, and uh, make sure that you know, they hold their vendors uh, accountable through the payment, uh, through clearly defined goals 
and their stipulated payment schedules. And what people don't realize is that all roads lead to the controller's office. We pay the bills. You pay the bills. That's okay, right. we're going to take a short break. We'll have more with controller George Maragos right after the break. <laughs> Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Frank, did you touch the router? Not me. Are you sure? I didn't touch the router, Grace. I saw you by the socket. I think I would remember unplugging the router. Well, I can't connect. Not my fault. Can you check? I tell you, I didn't unplug anything. I'm going to call them. At Optimum, we know some problems are easy to solve. Dang it. When they prove a little more complex, we're here 24-7. You fixed it. No wonder more people choose Optimum Online than any other internet provider. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back to MTL. We're here with the controller of Nassau County, George Maragos. Controller Maragos, we were talking about transparency in government, but now I want to shift gears. I mean, part of uh, what you do as uh, as controller is to is to analyze, you know, just how well Nassau County is is doing when it comes from managing their expenses, but also collecting the revenues that they anticipate. And the biggest source of cash is sales tax that comes into the county, much bigger than property taxes, oh, absolutely. Uh, by the way. Sales tax accounts for over 40% of our revenue. Property taxes only accounts to about 30%. So just how are sales tax collections going uh, in Nassau? They, they've been excellent uh, in the last uh, two, three years. Um, in uh, 2012, they were up over 4%. Uh, last year in 2013, they were up 6.2%. Uh, that's and, a very healthy growth. And what does that mean in terms of uh, cash? Because when the national recession hit, we saw sales tax collections you know, go negative year to year. That's right, they did. That's right. So we've come back from the, the deep recession and the collapse of our sales tax back in 2009 that now we're about $40 million above uh, mm -hmm. where we were in 2008, the peak of our, our tax. So we've recovered nicely. And I think that's also a barometer and a reflection of the recovery of our local economy. Our unemployment rate, as you've been reading, is down to 4.8%. People are working, they have money, they're out spending it. And we're happy about that. And, and of course, some of it in 2013 may have been a result of the catastrophic damage that Sandy did in the rebuild. It, it was. Obviously, that was uh, contributing. Uh, I think our budget projection was for about a 40%, uh, a 4 percent increase, mm -hmm. and we ended up with 6.2 uh, percent. Which is a third That's about more. Yeah. A third more. It's about 25 million dollars more. Which is, which is a significant amount of money. Now, uh, that said, for 2014, you know, again, sales tax are something that you estimate, unlike property taxes, where you know, okay, here's the assessed valuation, here's the tax rate. You know, we, we're collecting X amount of dollars for mm -hmm. our budget. You know you're going to get that for the most part. Right. The sales tax um, are, you know, have, are variable. They, they vary depending on economic activity. So what do you expect for 2014? Well, we budgeted very conservatively. We budget only a 2% growth over 2013. So that's very conservative given that mm -hmm. we're coming off a year where we had a 6.2% uh, uh, growth. Yeah. We, th we think we're going to exceed that, but it's always prudent to to budget uh, conservatively. So, so over two years, you've had over almost an 11 percent growth. So you'll, you're you're anticipating two, maybe three percent Co more. Correct. For th and then that's 14. that's very conservative. Yes. And now we're seeing we're, we've kind of seen the early indications of our um, uh, early 2014 mm -hmm. uh, sales tax receipts. And and if you recall, um, there was a kind of a landmark decision, a Supreme Court decision, to allow New York State 
the tax sales uh, um, uh, internet vendors. Now, th that is you know, a, an additional revenue stream mm -hmm. or potential revenue that we did not have the benefit uh, of in 2013. So we think that's going to start kicking in in 2014 and, and hopefully exceed our uh, budget projection. You know, it's interesting you brought that up because when I saw that decision, I said to myself, well, you know, for those of us who have uh, you know, purchased things over the Internet and nobody likes paying taxes and we didn't have, we, you know, wasn't collected at that time uh, by the vendor, you know, it was a nice little windfall. On the mm -hmm. other hand, if you're a business in New York State and you're, you know, and you're in the retail business and you're competing against that, you're put at an extraordinary disadvantage. And, of course, government also loses important revenue You are. As well. And now we've seen that playing field uh, uh, leveled. Uh, it's going to be an additional source uh, uh, of, of revenue, uh, especially at a time that uh, we've seen a dramatic shift in, in consumer buying habits from... Uh, uh, the retail stores, the, the brick and mortar, and mortar yeah. stores, onto the internet, uh, and we're going to continue to see that growth, which would have, uh, you know, which would have resulted in reduced sales tax revenue if it wasn't for this Supreme Court decision to allow the state uh, to tax uh, internet uh, so, vendors. So, so New York State and all these other states that that rely on sales tax revenues, as as virtually every state does, sure, it at least uh, levels that playing field so that out of state companies don't have an unfair advantage. Uh, absolutely. So give me a sense of how the county budget is. I mean, uh, you know, Nassau and for that matter Suffolk County still seem to have these structural deficits. There's still an enormous amount of borrowing going on for things that typically would be in an operating budget. Uh, what's your take on on the trends and, and, and at what point do we get to the point where in, in, in your mind, and for that matter, the rating agency's mind, uh, your budget will be, the, the Nassau County budget will be structurally balanced. Well, you know, it's, it's, I don't think a government will ever achieve a structural balance, maybe if the economy continues to boom. Uh, but it's a matter of definitions. You know, the, the county legislatures or governments um, enact a budget uh, that has to be uh, balanced. Now, that budget is a budget reasonably anticipates revenues and, and expenses and not all revenues are recurring sales tax and property taxes some of them are sale of assets mm -hmm. you know some of it are one-time uh, you know revenues you know and and when we talk about structural balance some of the regulatory authorities say well you can't count the sale of assets you can't count this you know d d receiving dividends or, or interest because you can't count on those well if you approve them in the budget to, at the beginning of the year, you should certainly accept them as, as revenues if they, are, if they occur at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And that's really where the debate, uh, the debate happens. Um, we've been, I've been proud in the, in the three years that I've been, uh, or four years now and going into five years, that we've had f almost uh, uh, three budget surpluses, and I think we're going to have in, in tw for 2013. Uh, now we're closing the books, another budget surplus. But some of the critics will say that one of the, you, everything you're saying is correct, and, mm -hmm. uh, and this is all nuanced accounting stuff, uh, but one of the, the, the big problems is that NASA is borrowing money, a lot of money, uh, to pay for these tax certiorities, these tax refunds. And you lost an important uh, decision at the Court of Appeals that would have pushed uh, those expenses mm -hmm. to the school districts who actually got the tax benefit, who actually collected the taxes. Um, and that a growing amount of the operating budget is being used to pay the interest on the borrowing for those tax refunds, the tax okay. certiorers. And there's absolutely no benefit to the taxpayers for that. We're in effect borrowing to pay refunds and paying interest on those on that. Uh, I mean, is, is, that a, is that a legitimate assessment or, or no, description no, of no, the situation? No, it's not. Okay, please, no, it's correct not, correct Because look at, the, the bottom line is that our total county uh, debt has not grown in, in four years. It stood at about $3.5 billion. But that's still a lot for it, a county it, like Nassau, among the No, highest. it's not. This, this is, you know, what I've tried to communicate okay. to people. And, and let's take a half a billion of that is for the sewer, which is a different fund altogether. Mm -hmm. So the county Total county debt is about $3 billion that has not grown in, in four years now. Now, $3 billion is a lot of money, but it's, it's about our total 
budget revenues of $2.83 billion. That's a one-to-one -one ratio. Most families have a mortgage that's three or four times their annual income, and that's manageable. So the county having a one-to-one -one ratio, our total debt liability equal to our total revenues of a one-to-one -one is very, very manageable. Okay. In comparison, the state has a ratio of four-to-one. Mm -hmm. The federal government, I don't need to tell you, it's probably seven or eight times their total well, annual Well, they revenue. don't even measure it on that right. basis. So they measure very, it as a percentage of right. GDP. So it's very manageable. Yes. Right. And we're very proud that you know, that okay. total debt has not grown in, in four years. All right, good point. We're going to take a short break. We'll have more with Comptroller George Maragos in about 90 seconds. So stay with us. But I'm, and that's like such... Can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner oh. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Frank, did you touch the router? Not me. Are you sure? I didn't touch the router, Grace. I saw you by the socket. I think I would remember unplugging the router. Well, I can't connect. Not my fault. Can you check? I tell you, I didn't unplug anything. I'm going to call them. At Optimum, we know some problems are easy to solve. Oh, dang it. When they prove a little more complex, we're here 24-7. You fixed it. No wonder more people choose Optimum Online than any other internet provider. Closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Welcome back. We're here with Nassau County Comptroller George Maragos, and we've been talking about the county budget. So let's get into some of the other uh, financial situations and, and get off these broad macro uh, indebtedness things and all that stuff. We'll leave that to uh, Moody's and Standard and Poor's and Fitch and all the other rating agencies whose job it is to figure, good out, idea. <laughs> to figure out what's really going on. Another big iceberg that's looming out there for Nassau County is that uh, NIFA, the Nassau Interim Finance Agency, has used its powers to prevent any wage increases since uh, they've been uh, overseeing the county's finances. And it seems that the pressure is building uh, to somehow uh, undo those year-to-year -year wage freezes, provide retroactive, and, and set up a, uh, some type of uh, increase uh, over the next couple of years. Um, do you have concerns about that? Because they're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, you know, right off the bat. I, I, I'm not involved in the negotiations. No, I, but I, I know, I know you're they're not, but you're the controller. There are um, uh, serious negotiations uh, going on to attempt to lift the, uh, the, the wage freeze. Uh, and my understanding that there is a framework in place uh, to um, forego the uh, the retroactive pay, or at least put it aside and uh, let the, the unions litigate that uh, and uh, come out with a new framework agreement, labor agreement going forward that would uh, result uh, in, in raises to the employees, uh, but also substantial savings on the part of the county versus the, what was uh, in the uh, uh, old or existing la labor agreement. Because you had labor agreements that basically uh, were... Um no, I was going to say abrogated, but it's not abrogated. What they did is that you know, the terms and conditions were changed because of the state uh, role in taking over the finances. Well, they were frozen. They were frozen. All, all, all increases, right. uh, whether uh, annual salary increases or step increases, were frozen. Were, were frozen. So the employees have not had a, an increase since the beginning of, uh, of 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, it's beginning to show up in, you know, in the morale of the, of the employees, in, in, in some of the productivity metrics that that we look at so it's important that I think we we uh, lift the wage freeze but do it in, in a responsible way so how do you define what's responsible how do you uh, how do you line up revenues you know to pay for that 
um, and, and not end up putting yourself more in debt to pay for it. Well, I know the, the public one would like to hear this, but uh, Governor Cuomo recently authorized NASA and Suffolk to install uh, speed cameras. What do you think of that, these speed <laughs> cameras, these red light cameras? I mean, look. I'm not going to pine on that. That's okay, you leave that to door. other people. <laughs> okay. You're just the controller. That's right. right. So I, I'm the bin counter. Have you ever gotten one of those tickets? For yes, going to yes I have. I have, too, and, <laughs> and I don't I even live it. in NASA. I feel like I'm making a donation to NASA. So I've got a couple of them. But, but, it's, uh, but it's, by the way, it's changed my behavior, especially when I get on old that, country roads. That's good. Road. That's